Hello everybody, doing another patch on a laundry room wall. This is a plumbing box. This is a very common repair. I have several videos on this type of patch itself. It's a very common repair in every house with a laundry room. These inside boxes, plumbing boxes, will always leak. Eventually you're going to have an issue with your plumbing box if you have one in your laundry room. So basically what to do is the plumber had to come in, he had to redo the copper pipes because the valves were leaking. So he did his job, he had to open up the wall to access it. Now the drywall has to be repaired. My first thing is I want to do is put down plastic to contain my overspray, my texture, and my demo. It's easier to put down plastic than clean up the mess afterwards. Then I want to take a level. I'm using here a one by two piece of wood. I'm just using this to mark around the patch. I use a one by two and a pencil just to make a nice square pencil out area. I'm going to cut out this area using a razor blade, nice sharp razor blade, nice and slow cut out. I want to get this area nice and square. On this patch, I got lucky. There's a two by four on each side of the patch. So I'm just going to cut the patch halfway center on the stud so I can secure my new sheetrock to the existing stud. If you don't have an existing stud in your way, then you're going to have to add backing. Backings, one by twos, two by fours, whatever it takes, you're going to have to add backing if you don't have no studs present. Go ahead and cut your area nice and square. Always demo your area nice and square. Maybe you're doing a patch and you want to just get it ready for the drywall or then hire drywall or you can save a lot of money just by cutting your patches out nice and square and clean. It makes the job easier. You'd be surprised you'll save a couple bucks just by doing this simple step right here before you hire someone. Go ahead and pull your nails, everything here, get it all ready. Any pipes in the wall, mark them with a the pencil so when you put on your new sheetrock patch you remember there's pipes in the wall. You don't want to put a screw on accident through these walls. If you need be, add backing, whatever you need to do. If you have studs there, always add plenty of screws on your studs. Get your measurements. Make sure the sides are pretty equal. This one's 17 by 17. You could piece it in three pieces or just one large piece and cut out the square on top. Easy patch under two by two. So I'm going to cut my measurements out with the sheetrock. First mark it 17 here, then below. Then 17 down, horizontal, 17 horizontal. Then I like to use my T-square. If you don't have a T-square, you can use a level, a piece of wood, anything, and then just pencil it. This basically tells you, hey, this is my size of my patch I need to cut out. My puzzle piece, I gotta make a new puzzle piece. I'm just gonna cut out that square right here, but I'm just gonna get the bulk piece of patch ready. So I'm just gonna cut it, score the sheetrock, score the back of it, snap it, same thing on the other cut. Just score it. You got to push down a little bit and then snap it. Now you got your patch. I'm just going to mark it here. I'm just going to level right next to the patch. Simple pencil here. I can get my cutout piece pretty easy. Easy enough. You can measure it. You can do it all. Whatever you need to do. I'm just kind of gliding here and then I'm going to use my T-square to get a nice penciled out area that I need to cut out. If you have a small gap, no worry. You're going to have to tape all this area anyways with fiberglass mesh tape. I'm going to cut out this side. You can cut out the sides with the keyhole saw. Two sides with the keyhole saw. Bring them down and then you're going to cut it with the razor blade. Easy repair here. We're just going to simple patch. This is a keyhole saw that I use. I like to use these keyhole saws for cutouts like this. Then I'm just going to cut it like I'm cutting sheetrock with the razor blade on the other side. Or you can just follow it through with the keyhole saw on the bottom part. Nice tight fit. You have to cut the razor blade to the sides to get your patch to fit nicely. Once you get your patch in, add plenty of screws. I like to add plenty of screws every two to four inches. Plenty of screws on the new patch side. Also, you marked your areas where the pipes are, so don't put any screws in your areas that you marked pipes. Add a couple screws on the outside edge to tighten up the old wall. Always do this process, adding screws to the old wall. This prevents cracks. If your patch is nice and secure, but your old wall isn't secure, you're going to have a loose area there, and you don't want it to crack out. 
So add plenty of screws. Plenty of screws is the most important step, adding plenty of screws. You want to make sure your screws are sunk deep into the sheetrock. You don't want screw heads sticking out. So when you go to fiberglass and mud, you're not hitting the screw head. So that's why we countersink our screws in the sheetrock. Once you get your screws added, go ahead and scrape your edge. Before you tape any areas, especially patchwork, you want to scrape it with a six inch knife to remove any goobers and stuff in your way. Once you get it scraped off, you can turn around and fiberglass mesh. I always use fiberglass mesh tape. On all my videos, I always use fiberglass mesh tape. This area here has texture, it's real rough, so I'm going to refinish this whole bottom wall area, scrape out this old texture. I'm going to end up taping this bad area and skimming out the wall below the patch. So that's what I'm doing here. So we're basically going to refinish this whole wall area. Scrape your area, add fiberglass, fiberglass mesh tape your whole patch area, any seams, press it down, and then you're ready for first coat. For first coat, you can either use a joint compound, which you have to let dry overnight. Here I'm using a quick set mud. This is a quick set five minute mud, which I'm mixing by the pan. I only need to mix a less than a half a pan here and mix it pretty thick. If you never mudded before, just use joint compounds, please. These quick set muds are more advanced type materials. They do set up quickly, so you have to work with the mud. If you never worked with mud and stuff, just stick to a joint compound because joint compounds, if you do make a mistake with a joint compound, you can turn around and sand away your mistakes. These hot muds, they set up like a cement, so you got to make sure your mud work is pretty good because you're going to have to turn around and slick it out. I'm just getting the mud. I'm pushing it inside the fiberglass mesh tape so I know the mud's getting inside that gap basically like a pre-fill, just pushing it down hard. And then I'm just going to skim out this whole area underneath the patch and just coat the patch. Most guys like to coat with a 10-inch knife. I use a 12-inch knife. My 12-inch knife is pretty much my go-to knife that I always use. But get the area nicely coated. Like I said, if you're using a joint compound, you just get the area coated and let it dry overnight. You're not trying to put a bunch of mud on the wall, caking big, heavy patch sticking out of the wall you just give a nice coat enough to cover your area joint compounds tend to shrink back a little bit these quick set muds don't shrink back with the quick set muds we're going to have to catch it as it's drying and slick it out with a sponge and a six inch knife within five minutes of it setting up joint compounds you have to let dry overnight of course go ahead and get your area all coated out once you're done Mudding the area, go ahead and clean up your tools. Always clean up your tools after your mud work. As your mud's setting up, you clean your tools and you get ready for the next step. Your next step with hot muds is you're going to have to get a clean six inch knife and a sponge and you're just going to hit the edge. This is five minute mud so the mud just barely started setting up about four to five minutes later. So you want to catch this mud as it sets up. This is how you work with quick set muds. Five minute, 20 minute, 40 minute, 90 minute. If you're using joint compounds you're going to have to sand in between coats. You don't sand hot muds. If people tell you you can sand hot muds they usually don't work with hot muds. You can sand them, but it's easier to slick them out before it sets up. That's the whole reason you use a quick set mud so you can do the next step. You don't use hot muds and then walk away from the job. You use hot muds so you can slick them out and finish the job in one trip. I'm just slicking it out, taking off the extra mud with the six inch knife. I'm just troweling it out. We're basically just Feathering it out, getting rid of the extra mud, feathering the edge, the texture edge. 
it's not going to be perfect. This is just a first coat. So it's kind of like a wet sanding technique, I guess you'd say. This is just slicking out. This is what you do with hot muds. Now I'm ready for a second coat. The second coat's going to be a little thinner than the first coat. Like I said, if you don't use hot muds, use a joint compound. You would just use a regular joint compound a little thinner than your first coat mud. I'm using a five minute mud, so I'm just going to mix up just over a quarter of a pan, just a little thinner than my first coat. We're just mixing it up. I like to mix pan by pan whenever I do these patch jobs. You can mix it in a bucket, but you don't need that much material. So we just use what we need. Same thing here, just make sure it's mixed thoroughly. It's nice and creamy. You want nice creamy mud, you don't want lumps in it. So you just mix it up nice and thorough. I'm just coating it real tight. I'm using a 12 inch knife and I'm going past my first coat work you're basically doing a skim coat. You're not trying to coat it heavy. The The first coat's already did the main job. The second coat is just to skim it over to make it nice and perfect. And if it needs be, then you have to do a third coat. So second coat, you can also go the opposite direction as your first coat, but we're just getting this whole patch area here skimmed out, the bottom area where the texture was rough that I'm going to retexture and around the box. If you're using hot muds like I am, then you're just going to have to get it all coated out before your mud sets up, get your tools cleaned up, and as your mud's setting up, you go clean your pan and knife and get ready for your next step. If this is a joint compound, you're going to have to let this dry overnight before you can do the next step process, and your next step process with the joint compound would be sanding it to get it ready for either a third coat or your texture process. Any extra mud, just dump it out and go ahead and wash out your tools. This is the next step. Now let's wait for the second coat to dry. While you're waiting for it to dry, you can set up your next step. With this will be the next step is my texture process. So I'm getting ready for texture, masking, getting everything prepped up for my next step. So now I'm using a joint compound for my texture. This is a spray splatter texture. So I'm just using a joint compounds for my textures. I already have it mixed in my bucket. I'm just basically showing you the consistency, like a really heavy, heavy pancake batter would be the consistency of a spray splatter. I'm using a hopper with the middle tip. I always use the middle tip. If you watch my other videos, you'd know about the middle tip is the most important tip. Just pouring a little bit of mud, just what I need. I only need like less than a half a hopper load for this patch. I always take a little extra because I don't like to go back get more mud so it's better to have a little more than less. I always cap my buckets. I don't want them drying out. Clean sponge, clean six inch knife. Always have these two tools whenever you're doing spray texture. The patch is still wet so I'm just going to finish masking the area, getting it all prepped up. With this it's a spray texture so I got to put plastic up For the overspray to contain the overspray. I spray it a heavy PSI through the compressor. So you want to just contain your overspray. And once a hot mud or your next coat sets up, here I like to always you have to get rid of this edge on mud work. Whenever you're doing spray texture patchwork, you always have to get rid of the edge. That's the most important part, that edge. So your patch, you don't see the mud edge. Feather that edge and then the rest of the work, just clean it up. You're just basically getting everything ready. Once you get it ready, if it looks good enough to paint as is, then it's ready for texture. A lot of people think textures hide a lot of imperfections. The texture is just a cosmetic overlay over your patchwork. The second coat or third coat process needs to be perfectly smooth and ready before you do any type of texture. If I leave it like this and paint over it, it'd be a perfectly smooth patch. No imperfections. If you do have any imperfections, maybe you're going to have to follow through with a tight third coat. That's no problem. If you need to do a third coat, no problem. How I'm slicking out this hot mud is almost treating it like a third coat or even a fourth coat since I slicked in between all coats. Get rid of that edge, any extra mud. Just let Make sure the patch is nice and set up. You don't want to texture over wet mud, especially with spray textures. Get rid of the edges, your base area around your trim, nice and clean. You don't want goobers and 
stuff sticking out. So you want a nice clean patch area ready for texture around your detail, everything. You want to also clean your six inch knife. Always keep knives clean. Now we're ready to get the air compressor going, air compressor hose. I know a lot of people spray with spray cans and stuff like that. They have these sponges. You need a sprayer with a hopper like this and an air compressor. There's no other way. There's a bunch of gimmicks out there. People say they texture with a sponge or this and that. You don't do that with a spray splatter. I'm just adjusting my throttle on my hopper and I wanna do a nice consistent pattern. This one I'm going up and down, vertical, 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 and then I might cross it off. Horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. A little extra around detail, around the boxes, around the base area. I want nice consistent pattern here. I don't want just a spray spot here and a spray spot there. I want a nice consistent pattern. Cross it off, diagonal, up and down, whatever you have to do to make a nice consistent pattern. And then the top part and the edges just kind of sprayed up to fade it out, kind of blend it into the existing. This is a spray splatter, so you just let the splatter sit, texture dry for at least 24 hours, and then you can turn around and primer and paint. Once you get it all textured up, go ahead and clean up your work area, pull your plastic. A lot of guys want to keep their plastic up overnight so they can paint around it, but always pull your masking when you're done texturing. You're just going to have to re-plastic areas when you go to paint. It's easier to clean up now and just let your work area dry. You don't want to speed dry it too because that sometimes will crack it out. So just let it dry overnight. With these joint compounds, sometimes it's better to let them dry on their own. If you try to put a fan on it or heat, sometimes they'll crack out areas. So just let it dry on its own. 24 hours is always a rule of thumb for most materials, especially joint compounds like this. But once he gets it paint it up then he can put his washing machine back and that's a good repair right here for a simple patch job around a plumbing pipe i have plenty of other videos in my playlist like this patch jobs repairs stuff like this what we do please go ahead and comment like subscribe and watch my other videos hey thanks for viewing